All right, thank you everyone for joining us. We're so excited to have you at our first workshop for your Build Your Bold Workshop Life on Campus. So for introductions, my name is Jessie Era and I'm a liaison officer this year at Brescia. So this is our first, first workshop of the series. We're very excited to begin with our Prepare for University section of the series, Life on Campus. So this session is meant to highlight what it's like to be on campus and the various student opportunities that Brescia has to offer. And I'm confident that we have an awesome panel to help us understand all these different aspects. All right, so just some friendly reminders. Please mute yourselves and turn off your cameras. Be respectful of everyone in the session. If you have any questions or comments, they can be written in the chat and the session will be recorded and sent to everyone via email afterwards. So a quick overview of what's gonna to happen today. First, I will give everyone on our panel a chance to give a quick introduction of themselves. And then on our slides, there will be six questions. Each of the panel, um, each person on the panel will be able to answer those questions as they pertain to their role on campus. And then if we have time, we'll have a Q&A at the end. All right, so here we are introducing the panel. So each slide will have one of the panelists and then they will have the opportunity to kind of go more into depth about who they are and what the role is on campus. So first, our panelist number one is Meg. She is a coordinator for the Student Life and Learning at Brescia Student Life Center. So hi Meg, you can go and introduce yourself. Yes, so hi everyone, my name is Meg Peary. And like Jess said, I'm one of the coordinators of Student Life and Learning here at Brescia. And it's a job I love. It's a community I love. And a lot of what I do, I wear many hats. Um, so some of my portfolio is careers, some is wellness. I uh, co-coordinate the uh, Boldworks work study program here at Brescia, along with you know career advising and career group advising. Um, but within Student Life, we also, um, oversee orientation and transition and uh, help implement and um, enhance sort of leadership opportunities as well on campus. So that's uh, a quick overview, but I'm so happy to meet all of you in this setting. Awesome. Thank you so much, Meg. So that's panelist number one. And next up we have Katie. Hi everyone, um, as it says on the screen, my name is Katie Hudson and I'm the senior student ambassador this year. Um, so what I do in that role is primarily coordinating campus tours. So if you do decide um, to come visit campus, I'll organize your tour guide and making sure that someone's around to show you around campus. Um, in that role, I also work with a lot of um, events like Fall Preview Day and this year a lot of virtual events like this. Um, I'm in my fourth year of the psychology program at Brescia, um, which I really love. I'm doing my thesis this year, so that's super exciting. I'm also a wellness peer um, and I'm on the rock climbing club at Western Main Campus. So I have really enjoyed my Brescia experience so far and I'm excited to share it with all of you. Thank you so much, Katie. And last but not least, we have Dana. Hello, my name is Dana Singer and I am the Russia University College uh, Residence Council um, president this year. Um, I am in my fourth year here at Russia studying um, psychology and then doing kinesiology on main campus. Um, the, I just can say a little bit about what um, the Residence Council does for the residence community and we are a student uh, group um, here in residence that um, provides uh, event programming to students as well as leadership opportunities through positions on our council. Um, I'm excited to speak more about the great opportunities that we have here. Awesome, thank you so much, Dana. All right, so now we are going to get to the questions. So the slide will show the first question and then I'll ask each of our panelists to kind of touch upon um, what they have prepared for that, those questions. So our first question, what are some fun and interesting opportunities that Brescia has to offer? So Meg, if you wouldn't mind going first for this one. 
Um, so I think when I think about the um, fun and interesting opportunities that Brescia offers students, I would say that Brescia's commitment to educating the whole student to um, having graduates lead with wisdom, justice, and compassion actually starts from day one. Um, so, you know, when you arrive at Brescia, the orientation program really sets you up for success during that time of transition. Um, but alongside that, as you, you know, progress during your Brescia journey, um, through student life, especially an area that I'm familiar with, we have a, a wide array of what we call paraprofessional leadership roles. So these are volunteer, um, but you know, whether you're a career peer providing drop-in resume and cover letter support during a weekly shift or LinkedIn help or running a workshop on campus in virtual right now, um, you, uh, there's also wellness peer opportunities where you're working in our Baines peer support space, providing mild to moderate mental health support to fellow students. Um, these are just two examples that come to mind as well as our orientation leaders, but they all um, allow you to really grow personally and professionally because there's significant training and education involved. There's one-on-one -on -one coaching with a coordinator within student life. And we really work to not just create a community, but also allow you to, I think, really develop into the best possible individual and citizen that you can be as well. So those are sort of three that I would, I would highlight. That was great. Thanks so much, Meg. Um, Dana, you're next on my screen. So do you want to start sharing? Um, for sure. So I can speak a little bit about the um, opportunities uh, Brescia that I've been involved in um, in the past. Um, I was a orientation leader or a SOF for the last two years at Brescia. Um, and uh, Brescia's orientation program is probably one of the best on campus. Um, it provides such uh, fun and um, like really cool um, events for first year students coming into to um, Russia to uh, get acquainted with campus, to like make new friends, um, learn some um, things about a university life right off the bat. Um, I'm also involved in the um, wellness peer program. Uh, Meg mentioned that a little bit. We operate out of the Baines peer support space and provide um, peer support to our fellow students who may be experiencing some uh, struggles with their mental health. Um, and then there's opportunities in residence to get involved um, as I'm sure a lot of first year students who are coming into Brescia uh, might be living in residence. And uh, so in residence, we have the um, residence council uh, that I've spoken about already a little bit, as well as opportunities uh, for uh, students to be residence staff. Um, and um, Russia has a ton of like clubs and student groups um, that um, provide really cool opportunities to get involved on campus. Um, and yeah, I think um, that the programs that I've been involved on, with on Russia have been a really cool opportunity for me and definitely taught me a lot about myself and have um, helped me to gain some new skills. Awesome, thank you so much, Jaina. And then we'll go to Katie. Hello. Okay, uh, Dana and Meg both touched on a lot of really great opportunities. One thing I would definitely add is that there's always really fun events going on at Brescia. Um, so even if you're not a part of various clubs and teams and volunteer opportunities, there's often things going on around campus that you can still kind of get involved with and dip your toe into the water if you're not really sure what you wanna get involved with yet. I've done um, like free yoga with student council in the auditorium. I've been to the international fair where people had brought like all different kinds of food from different countries, which was delicious and super fun. Um, there's always workshops and um, trainings and things like that going on. Like I think they're running upstander training tomorrow. I've done safe talk twice through Brescia. Um, there's just a variety of really cool things going on on campus always it seems like and because it's so small you really do like find out about these things i feel like 
I'm always seeing like posts on Instagram or emails about just like cool events that are happening on campus um, if you're available and want to get involved in them. So I would say that's something that's really cool about Brescia um, is the ability to participate in these just kind of individual like workshops and events and trainings and things. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. That concludes question number one. We'll move on to number two. What are the advantages of going to an affiliate of Western University? So how about Katie, you can start us off for this one. Um, I would say the big advantage really is that you have access to everything at main campus, but then you also have this nice like home base kind of at Brescia where things are a little bit smaller. Maybe you know more people, it's a bit more familiar. But then you also have access to go down to main campus and use any of the services that they have there. So you can use the rec center, you can join any of their clubs and teams, um, you can go study in the libraries and around, you can take classes, um, anything you really want at Maine, but then you also have this kind of like nice, like tight knit community up at Brescia where you can feel like you have this like secure base to bounce off from and try um, different things, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Dana, anything to add? Um, yeah, so Katie said um, a lot of things that are very true for most students at Brescia, um, having the ability to be a part of both Western's big campus and Brescia's small campus um, is really um, an advantage of going to an affiliate as well as most affiliate um, schools like Brescia have um, a much smaller student body so classes are very small and intimate your professors really get to know who you are and you can get to know them um, i really like the small class sizes um, because of um, just um, i like having uh, being in a smaller group versus like hundreds of people in my lecture class um, um, Brescia being an affiliate um, also um, has a lot of, we have access to a lot of like Brescia services like career counseling here. Um, academic advisors here, um, as well as um, on main campus, especially if you're taking a program that um, is on main campus, like uh, myself, I'm in a double major doing psychology here at Brescia, but doing kinesiology on Western. So I get uh, the academic services of both of those programs and it's really great. Awesome, thank you. And then Meg, anything to add as well? Yes, I love this question because I'm actually an alum of an affiliate as well. Not Brescia, another one. Um, so speaking from that perspective and now as a staff member, I think I would highlight everything that both Dana and Katie very wisely pointed out. And I would also say that that sense of community and belonging, um, even after you graduate and after convocation, it carries over. So there's this wonderful network and community of fellow alumni who are here to support you and here to help you that you can continue to maintain these connections with um, as you as you move on in your life beyond Russia as well. So it's like this full continual of support that you receive from day one to, you know, long after graduation. Awesome. Thank you so much. So now I'll move on to question three. What campus support services are available to students? I know we've touched on this a little bit so far, but if anyone wanted to go into detail about any specific supports they are aware of, that would be great. Um, Dana, you can start us off. Uh, for sure. Russia has a really uh, vast number of uh, services available on campus to students, um, such as um, our sort of central hub for most services is the Hive. Uh, the Hive can connect students to academic advising, to financial aid, to the Student Life Center for career appointments, um, as well as um, the Student Life Center operates uh, some mental health services with case management for uh, students who have a bit more um, complex um, issues that they're struggling with. Um, Brush has got um, like campus ministry services um, as well as um, 
like food services on campus where you can um, like eat and buy food here, even if you're not a student living in residence. Um, as well as there's like shuttle services um, to get um, the students around campus more uh, quickly. It runs between um, Russia and uh, the affiliate Kings um, University College um, and that um, is helpful to a lot of students coming to campus. Um, I think I've covered all the ones that I know. I'm sure uh, Meg and Katie can speak more to some other services. Awesome, yeah, thank you. Um, Meg, do you have any other services to share about? Um, I think Dana did a fantastic job touching on the, the variety and the depth of the support services that are available at Russia. Um, I think Dana mentioned international as well, uh, but we do have an international student coordinator who's here to help. And yeah, I would just say that within this small community, there is a breadth and depth of available supports to help you along the way. So, yeah. Great. And Katie, I know we've covered a lot of them, but do you have anything else to talk about with that? I don't have any additional services to add. I think between Meg and Dana, they really <laughs> touched on most of them. But I would add that just because Brush is such a small campus, it's really easy to access the services you need. I think sometimes on a bigger campus, it can feel really intimidating trying to figure out who to get in contact with to access these services. Um, but at Brescia, because we're so small, you can really just drop by the Hive, which I think Dana said is our like central hub for student services, um, and let them know what you need help with, and they'll redirect you to the right faculty member who can help you out. So I would say that's a huge advantage of being at a small campus. Yes, 100% agree with that, Katie. Thank you so much. So we'll move on to question number four. How do you balance academics and being a student leader? So we have two student leaders here, and then we have Meg, who is an actual staff member. So Meg, you can talk about it as when you were a student or how you see students do it now or how you do it in your professional career. Any way you want to talk about that, and you can go, go first if you like. Love to, and I, I love this question. So I think it actually really uh, bounces well off of what we were just talking about, which is the available supports. So um, you know, when it comes to academics and being a student leader within student life, we have a motto: by students, for students, with students. And we always say to the student leaders we have the privilege of working with, um, "You're a student first. So, you know, first and foremost, that's why you're at Russia. You're there to study. Um, but there are, that said, a lot of different available um, resources that you can access, whether that's through, you know, a career advising appointment or academic advisors or even like Western's um, learning and development services. Uh, there's a lot of really helpful tips that they provide on their website. They do workshops throughout the year that I've um, been able to refer students to. And um, yeah, so I would say tapping into the, the supports that are there to help because we're really here for you. Um, we want you all to succeed. We want you all to have the best possible experience. So finding ways to make that happen is, is one of the reasons why we all enjoy our work so much. So yeah. Awesome, thank you so much. Katie, would you like to go next? Yes, I would say I agree with Meg that in all the student leadership positions I've been able to be a part of, I really feel like whoever the staff coordinator may be is really accommodating of our school schedule um, and understanding that we are a student first and that our academics need to come first. Um, so I've always felt really supported um, by people that I'm working with at Brescia. Um, in addition to that, I would say I'm a huge fan of Google Cal <laughs> and that's where most of my organization um, comes from and then I use like a physical bullet journal to write down my to-do lists every day um, and that's just what I find works for me but I think it takes a lot of trial and error um, especially now that we've shifted so much stuff to online to figure out kind of what method of organization works for you so I think it's important to you know maybe in first year when you aren't necessarily as involved on campus spend some time figuring out how to stay organized and on top of your things um, because it's different for everyone. I love those tips so much. And then Dana. 
Um, for me, I really love being involved in my community. So being a student leader has always been a part of my university um, career. Um, I stay um, balanced between my academics and my responsibilities as a student leader um, by our lovely supports um, from our staff advisors, like Meg is the staff advisor for the wellness peer team. And she has been a really big help to all of us on the wellness peer team to um, keep our academics in check while still being able to um, fulfill our role as a wellness peer. Um, and any other staff member does the same thing for um, all student leaders. Um, I, for staying organized personally, I'm kind of like Katie, I like to write things down of what I need to do. I have my handy dandy agenda where I put in all of my sort of like, my like things that are due for school or like my shifts for um, like my office hours or meetings and things like that. And um, I found that that took me, like how Katie was saying, it's a bit of try and, trial and error. It took me a couple of years to figure out that that was how I stay organized best. Um, but yeah, it's been a super big help to me, not just my agenda, but like the staff advisors, um, they're always here for support um, in any way that they can. Thank you so much. Those were some great insights about being a student leader. Now on to question number five. How has being involved on campus affected your overall student experience? So Dana, do you want to get started again? Yeah, for sure, Jessica. Um, so being involved on campus has really made my student experience like the best that it could be. Of course, academics are a big part of like being a student, um, but as well, I think a big part of it is getting involved in the campus community. Um, like I've loved being an orientation leader as well as a wellness peer and now with residence council, it just makes um, me feel like I'm connected to a lot of students on campus, like within residence, but also the bigger community. Um, and it's been truly, a wonderful time um, being involved on those. I've learned so much about myself. I've grown a lot. I've learned new skills. Um, I don't think I'd be where I am today without those experiences. Thank you so much. And Katie, how about you? I would say that being involved on campus really just makes me feel like I'm a part of it um, in a way that when I wasn't as involved on campus in like my first and second year, I just didn't feel. Um, I love now that when I walk around campus, I see so many people that I know from just like various things I've done um, on campus. And it's just nice to be like walking around and see all these friendly faces or to see emails about events and think like, oh, I helped with that or I was a part of that and I went to that. Um, it's a really nice feeling and it makes you feel like kind of just a part of your university, not like it's just somewhere you go to go to class. Um, and then it's really helped me grow as a person to like learn about all these things that I like to do or what I don't like to do and make new friends. And yeah, I would strongly recommend at least getting involved in like a couple of things that you just are drawn to. Um, cause it really makes your university experience more than just like going to lectures and reading your textbooks. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. And Meg? Yeah, so, I mean, in my undergrad, uh, like I said, I was also at an affiliate. And I'm just really grateful that I was able to be involved in, um, in a variety of things. Sorry, my toddler escaped. Um, but what being involved did for me was I think it really built my confidence up and allowed me to connect with people I may not have otherwise met. And, um, and in doing that, yeah, you learn about yourself and you feel connected to the community around you, which is an amazing thing. I think we all really yearn for that sense of belonging, which is what really affiliates, I think, are so exceptional at providing, especially Brescia. Um, but then you're also part of something bigger than yourself, which I think is something Katie and Dana I've mentioned too, whether it's event planning or supporting other students and just learning about yourself. So I think being involved is such a great way to gain experiences and skills. 
And then as someone who also does uh, career support for students, I also would say too that this can really help inform your decisions and opportunities you pursue after university because these roles look great on a resume and they're really helpful to demonstrate a different skills and, and, um, and interests to potential employers as well. So that would be my response. Absolutely, thank you so much. And now our last question, what advice would you give a high school student considering Brescia? So Katie, would you like to start us off? Yeah, um, I think I would say to go with your gut on if Brescia feels like somewhere that's appealing to you, then it probably means it's the right place for you. I think that when you're applying to university, it's easy to get caught up in like the academics and the program and the classes and all of that stuff is really important. But also pay attention to when you're attending these kinds of virtual events for schools, like how does it make you feel? And does it feel like a school you want to be a part of? Because that was what was the really big draw for me um, to Brescia was that when I came to visit campus, it felt like a community that I could really thrive in and that I would really enjoy. Um, and then I would also recommend when you do start at Brescia, use that same kind of gut feeling to guide you toward courses you may want to take or clubs you may want to join and things you want to get involved with. Um, I can speak from my own experience that choosing things because you think they look good on a resume is nowhere near as fulfilling as choosing things because something inside of you is like, oh, I think I might like that. Um, so I would just recommend like go with your gut feeling um, when you're making these decisions in the next couple of years because that's probably where you're going to end up feeling more fulfilled. That's some great advice. Meg, do you have anything else to offer? Yeah, I, I think that um, getting a sense of what the campus is like and also understanding how you learn, how you learn best and uh, what you're looking for in terms of community. But I think it, it also goes back to um, what we were talking about earlier about uh, an affiliate like Brescia where you have the benefits of the small community and the wonderful connections that they provide you as well as the opportunities and supports coupled with having a much larger campus, just a quick walk or a uh, bus ride away. So I think uh, when I'm thinking about that, I think that you get an unparalleled experience at a place like Brescia um, alongside, yeah, the benefits of having the larger Western community close by. So that would be my tip, but I loved what Katie said too about like trusting your gut. And a question I always encourage people to ask is not just um, what do I want to do or what do I want to study, but how do I want to feel? And then when you are, you know, looking at your view book and reading about Brescia online, um, if it's connecting with that feeling that you'd like to have while you're in post-secondary, then go for it. Um, we want to see you, we want to meet you, and we'd love to welcome you in September. Awesome advice. And last but not least, Dana. Um, so advice that I would want to give to actually myself as a high school student considering Russia was I um, sort of went into it um, not really sure. I knew I wanted to go to Western, but I was unsure about Russia's small campus um, and how that's a little bit different from like the typical university experience, um, like with the um, not having the big classes, not having the big residence, um, that sort of thing. But um, in the end, it was really what was best for me. Like uh, how Meg said, like, you have to think about like what your learning style is and like what your learning needs are. And mine were definitely like that smaller classroom setting, um, smaller campus, um, less people around, that sort of thing. And um, it really helped me thrive here and like feel as though I was part of the community. And um, what I would um, like say is, can you imagine yourself like being there on campus, being involved, um, going to classes, um, that sort of thing, um, I think is important to keep in mind if you can really connect with um, the school and see yourself there. 
Thank you so much. That was some really great advice from all three of you. I really appreciate that. And I'm sure everyone watching does too. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't look like we have any questions. However, I know one quick question that we can ask that a lot of students ask is when it comes to being involved on campus and having that small campus feeling, how that can be beneficial with making connections and friendships at school. So Katie, would you like to touch on that quickly? Yeah, I would say that um, a big benefit of being on the small campus is that it's really easy to make connections. Um, I find myself walking around campus a lot. And even if it's I run into people that they're not necessarily my like best friend who I hang out with on the weekends, it's someone that I've had lots of classes with before, especially as you get into your upper years. And it's like, oh, like I could work with my group project on them, or maybe I'll text them and see if they can share their notes with me. And it's just nice to have those kinds of connections. I would also share um, that I've met some of my best friends at Brescia, um, particularly living in residence. But I think that because it's such a small campus with small classes, even if you aren't living in residence first year, you still are able to interact with people in your classes and get to know them and make friends with them. Um, even if you're not living together in first year, which is really cool and I think unique to a smaller campus. Thank you so much. Um, Dana, anything else about connections and friendships? Um, yeah, like how Katie was saying, um, the small campus really is conducive to making close friendships and connections with other students. Um, like I know that when I walk around campus right now, like I can recognize almost everybody that I see and like that feels so nice. Um, I um, have made lots of close connections with people both in residence and just in my classes who um, are living off campus. Um, it's, um, it's a really special thing to have a small tight knit community, I think. Thank you so much. And Meg. I think that Katie and Dana just put it perfectly that, yeah, when you're involved, you you get to meet people, uh, but also you get that connection in your class. And I think something that I came to value after my time in university was that because of the uh, different clubs I joined or like varsity athletics that I that I took part in at Western, I was able to meet people that I would have never normally met. Uh, which is actually kind of cool too. It just feels like serendipity. So you never know where that path will lead or who you'll encounter, but it's almost always worth that journey. So I would say involvements are just such a great way to learn about yourself and build a supportive community around you for your time at university and beyond. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was great insights from all three of you. So I just want to give everyone a big thank you for coming to our first workshop again. Just on your left, you can see the admissions and recruitment email is bucbound at uwo.ca. You can join us on Unibuddy at that link there where you can connect with our student ambassadors, watch blogs and vlogs, and check out lots of other information about Brescia. And our next workshop is going to be a program spotlight on Wednesday, October 21st at 6 p.m. And again, here are other ways that you connect and visit Brescia virtually. We have many different virtual events that you can check out on our website. Our fall preview day, preview day is Saturday, November 7th. Our March break open house is on March 13th, 2021. There's always in-person campus tours, and then you can follow us on any of our social media. So thank you so much. Please feel free to connect with us whenever you can. On the right, you can see what a Unibuddy profile would look like and how you can connect with our student ambassadors. And there's our email if you ever have any more questions. So thank you so much. Thank you to our panelists. You did an amazing job. And we hope that you will connect with Brescia sometime soon. Bye.